the idea of the interface is to apply polymorphism to your code. And polymorphism means that a piece of code changes its behavior depending upon the concrete data it is operating on. And it's the polymorphism that gives us the ability to decouple our code from change. That's the whole idea. And what's changing is the data is changing. So these methods that we learned, the method mechanics learned how to allow a piece of data to exhibit behavior. And then we're learning how to leverage the interface to write code whose behavior can change depending upon the concrete data that we pass through. And in that example that I'm going to come back into here, we defined that reader interface, remembering that the reader interface, it, that, that interface type is a valueless type. There's nothing concrete about it. You can't really construct it. You can't manipulate it. You can't transform it. It's just a layer of decoupling from the concrete data itself based not on what concrete data is, but based on what concrete data can do. And so we define this interface and we say that it has a method set of behavior. Now this particular interface has one act of behavior named read. And when we are defining interfaces, we don't want to design them. We want to discover them. We want to discover them through the concrete implementations we have. And so these names really should kind of be like verbs. A reader reads, a writer writes, a printer prints. And with this interface type defined and its methods, method set laid out, we then can start to define the things in our program that are solving the actual problem, these concrete types. And you've got your file type. And we said in Go, because the compiler can perform static code analysis, that all we have to do is define the method. And that will be enough for the compiler to identify if a concrete type implements the method set of behavior. There's no configuration in Go. It's all about convention. And so this method, because it has the same name and signature, we can now say that the concrete type file now implements the reader interface, and it's using value semantics. And we then went ahead and constructed another concrete type. We named it pipe. File was manipulating file systems. We can imagine pipe manipulating networks. And pipe also implements this read method. And now we can say that the concrete type pipe now implements the reader interface using value semantics. And we now have two distinct concrete pieces of data exhibiting read behavior and satisfying the method set for that reader interface. And so I went ahead and defined what I'm calling a polymorphic function. It's polymorphic because this function accepts concrete data not based on what it is, but based on what it can do. And the big core here is that the only data that we can man the only data we can move around our program, manipulate and transform is the concrete data, that struct data, that int, the, the real values. And so this interface reader doesn't exist. This function isn't asking for a reader value because from our programming model, it doesn't exist. It's asking for any piece of data that knows how to exhibit the full method set of behavior defined by reader. And then we realize that polymorphism. We realize polymorphism on line 53 when we realize that this read method through the interface can behave differently depending upon the concrete data it is operating on. If we pass a file value through, it starts to read files. We pass a network value through, it starts to read networks. And we realize now we have a layer and a pr precise layer of decoupling because the interface is asking for concrete data not based on what it is, but based on what it can do.